Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, R-O-W, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing with you all this week about Thanksgiving. I'm going to share um, a lot of different ideas um, for kindergarten through fifth grade, even some sub lessons and ideas thrown in all sort of themed around Thanksgiving and a few things to prepare as you start thinking about and getting ready for December um, because it's <laughs> coming faster than uh, maybe we realize. So last week I had some troubles. Um, sorry, Instagram, you cut out halfway through the video and Facebook had some weird sound issues. So if any of that is a problem, let me know. I'm gonna try, I have my laptop here and I'm gonna like try and like watch I'll like have it on in case someone says like, I can't hear something because last week I couldn't even see your comments. So if, if, you, if you can't hear or the mic's not working or whatever, let me know and I can try and fix it. I don't know if I'll be able to see the comments as it's happening on my computer. I don't know. I've never done that before. So we're going to try. Um, so anyway, just quick recap. I'm going to um, quick run through some books about the Nutcracker. Last week I shared books, just general books about Thanksgiving um, and winter. And the week before that I shared just books about Thanksgiving. So I wanted to share just a four of my favorite Nutcracker books. There are a lot of cool Nutcracker books that you can use, but I wanted to share those because I know that people, it's good to have that information ahead of time in case you want to, you know, check that book out of your library or go look for it on, you know, a used bookstore or a used bookseller online or something like that. Um, I, it's good to have that that information ahead of town, ahead of time. So I'm going to share some of those things now, so you can think about that later. And then I'm going to jump into and get as many kindergarten less or not kindergarten, as many Thanksgiving lessons as I can share from kindergarten up through the older grades, and even a couple sub ideas if we can get to it, um, because Thanksgiving is happening very soon. <laughs> it's in a lot of our lessons this week. So that's what's going to happen. If along the way you have questions or comments, uh, please leave questions in the, the video feed. I would always try and go back and answer those the best that I can, either during the video or when the video is over. Uh, last week I couldn't see any of your questions. I'm starting to see them now on Facebook, but I couldn't see any of your questions. And thankfully there are some people who are watching who are like, I think he's talking about blah, 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 and they answered it for me. So it's, it's cool to see you interacting because really it's not, I, I don't want this to just be me sitting in front of my phone <laughs> and talking to my phone, but um, it, I want it to feel more like a community because music teachers don't just, we just don't get that time. And so all of that time is valuable. So thank you so much for commenting and questioning and, and answering each other's questions and throwing in links. That's always super helpful. Okay, so um, let's talk about Nutcracker books. There are a ton of really cool books you can find. I just want to start with like my standard favorite. This is my the best Nutcracker book I found and I use it all the time. So this book is by I think Susan Jeffers um, and it's just it's one that you've maybe seen before. It's sort of everywhere um, but it's a really great book and I like it um, because well a couple reasons. So it really does sort of give illustrations a background of the story. It talks a little bit about what happens before the Nutcracker. Um, it gives a little bit of um, context to the Nutcracker. It uses the terminology Marie instead of Clara, but you know, that's, I learned last year what I shared about the Nutcracker, that has something to do with, there's like a Russian strain of the story and a German strain of the story, and one is one and one is the other. So anyway, interesting, but you can call her whatever you want, whether you call her Marie or Clara. Um, so it, it gives some really fun context. What I like is when it gets into the actual story, like the, the fantasy part of the story, um, I love that some of just just some of the illustrations. For instance, when you get to um, the snowflakes, like the land of the snowflakes, it, it really looks like ballerinas who are dancing, um, which is great. Uh, again, when you get to like the sugar plum fairy, again she looks like a ballerina. Um, when they go through, it, it doesn't give a lot of pages on um, the ballerina. Uh, or sorry, on the, the land of the sweets and all that, that sort of stuff. But it does give um, some really good visuals. And this is great in case you're going to show the Nutcracker or portions of the Nutcracker to your students. It's cool to, to like load them up with this information now so that like before they even see it, they're getting some of this through the book. So that's why I love um, this version of it. Um, and it's just so it's just so colorful and so fun and sort of has a, a cool, unique ending. And so um, it's a really great one. Susan Jeffers, this is 
my favorite version. Um, on the links page, either on Facebook if you're watching, in the bottom of the main comment or caption for this video, there's a link to the links page on Instagram, my LinkedIn profile, there's a link to the, all the links page. Um, and on there, if you're interested in any of these books, I have linked to Amazon. You don't have to buy from Amazon, but um, Amazon will give you the ISBN number, will give you the author, will give you a look into the book. So it's a, a great place to keep all that information um, together. But you can get it anywhere. You can get the information or you can get the book anywhere. But anyway, there are links to this book and all the other books I'm going to talk about on that, that links page. Okay, another one, and this is one that my friend Karen shared with me last year. Um, she said she had a friend who sold Usborne books. I don't know anything about Usborne books. I don't have hardly any, but Karen bought this one for me, and it's so cool, um, and it is written by Anna Milborn. Um, you can find them on, you can find it on Amazon, but if you have a friend who's an Usborne books dealer, um, ask them first. But this is a cool one because it's like a, a cutaway sort of a book. So it's like a peek inside. You can see through the book. Um, but again, really just sort of fun, unique illustrations, some that might be, um, you know, fun for your kids. Um, this is not one that would be like super duper amazing, great for a huge class because it's more sort of a board book. It's sort of small, but it has these fun little compartments. Um, it has the fun cutaway where you can see through the book. Um, and it, it does give some really fun illustrations that I think the kids would resonate with. So this is a really fun, different version of the book. Um, but again, because it is so small, you might, you might want to find a bigger version or, you know, find another way you can use this in a small group. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Maybe you have a class of six. Who, who knows? Then that book would be perfect. But it's a really cool book. And that one, again, is by um, Anna Milborn. But it is an Usborn book. So if you've ever heard of that and you have a friend who's like a dealer, <laughs> that can't be the word, who's someone who sells them. <laughs> But if you have a friend who has connections, check this book out. It's a really cool one. And then there are a couple of books that I think are a little bit more unique. You can find, and, and on the links page, there are a ton of links to books that are just different versions of, different retellings of um, the Nutcracker story. But then there are some really cool variations. So for instance, this one um, tells Duke Ellington's Nutcracker Suite. And maybe you know that Duke Ellington did his own version of the Nutcracker. Well, this tells the backstory to that. Um, it goes in, this is by Anna Harwell Salenza, illustrated by Don Tate. Um, and it, it's really cool. It you know, starts 1960, Las Vegas was the land of opportunity, a new frontier in the world of entertainment. All the stars were there, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, and more. Perhaps the brightest star of all was Duke Ellington, an American pianist, composer, and big band leader. And it tells a little bit about Duke Ellington and his band at the Riviera Hotel. Um, it, it, it is sort of a long story. And if you look, there's, there's a lot of text. But, um, you know, he says, I want to challenge myself, create music that can't be categorized, said Duke. Got any ideas? And someone said, you know, what about Tchaikovsky? Have you heard the Nutcracker Suite? And it's, it's really cool because Duke Ellington did come up with this really unique and fun sort of big band swing version of the Nutcracker Suite. And oftentimes you'll hear that at like a department store at Christmas um, if you're out shopping. Um, but just really, really fascinating. The pictures are fun. Um, it talks about the story and backstory of Duke Ellington and of this Nutcracker Suite. So just a really super cool thing to add. Um, and again, not only, and the pictures are just so cool too. Not only will it give your kids a little bit of music history, um, it gives them context about another version of the song. It gives you a chance to talk about you know theme and variation, or it gives you a chance to um, play that music and give them a little bit of exposure to a different sort of sound. But it also has, you know, it means that you'll have a diverse representation of people in your Nutcracker story. And the Nutcracker is like predominantly Western and white in most of the retellings and, sh and and versions that we have. And so this is a really cool version that gives students another, you know, just a bit of context based on an actual thing that happened when Duke Ellington rewrote the Nutcracker Suite with his own sort of version. Um, and so anyway, super cool. And this one, like I said, is Duke Ellington's Nutcracker Suite by Anna Harwell Salenza, illustrated by Don Tate. And there's a link to that on the links page too, if you're interested. Um, the last Nutcracker one I'm going to show you, like I said, there are many different Nutcracker books you could use. It's another one that's a really sort of unique version. This is called The Nutcracker in Harlem. This is written by T.E. McMorrow and illustrated by James Ransom. Um, this one 
is about a little girl whose family has a party, but the, the party, it's not the original. Well, it is the original story. It's just a different context. And, and again, this, if nothing else, this gives you a chance to talk about, Hey, we're going to take this story and we're going to transplant it. How can that, how is that different? How can it be the same? And, and that transfer of knowledge, that's, you know, part of the critical thinking. That's part of the landscape of critical thinking. So it's just a really cool thing to get kids to think about the story, especially if they already know the Nutcracker story in a sort of a different way. So the Nutcracker in Harlem, it starts out, it was snowing in Harlem on Christmas Eve. The party at Marie's house swirled with colors, gold and red and green. Mama and Poppy were dancing. Miss Addie sang and Uncle Cab played the piano. Marie loved the sound of Christmas. Join in Marie, Uncle Cab called out. Marie looked down, she wished she could sing. But Marie was afraid she wasn't any good, certainly not like Miss Addie or Uncle Cab. The song ended. It was time for gifts. Uncle, year, every year, Uncle Cab would give Marie a doll and Freddie some toy soldiers. They were carved from a magical wood, Uncle Cab always said. He handed Freddie his gift. And now for my Marie, said Uncle Cab. A nutcracker, said Marie, a drummer boy nutcracker. Dum diddy dum 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 dee dum, played the nutcracker on his drum. Uncle Cab sang a tune to the beat of the little drummer. The room again filled with song and everyone in the house was singing or dancing. Everyone except Marie. So you can sort of see that it's very much the same sort of story, um, but it's just a little bit different. Um, and it, you know, they make small alterations. And again, you know, the, the story comes to life um, and the, the rat king comes out or the, you know, the rat soldier comes out. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely just a little bit of different context. Um, Marie picks up the drum and starts playing. She sort of jumps in for the nutcracker. Um, and when Marie starts to play, the nut, the, the rats run away, they get scared. Um, and they get smaller and they shrink and she comes back to normal size. And, um, it's just a, it has a slightly different take because she doesn't go to like the land of the sweets or anything, but it really is sort of, it feels a little bit more like based in reality, like maybe it is her dream sequence. And anyway, so it's just a very, very cool story. Um, and, and, it, uh, in the end she does decide to join in and make music with the rest of the people at the party. And so it's just a very cool, different version, especially if your students know the traditional version of the story, this is a great one to share again, to give them more context, to give them, um, diverse characters, to give them representation in the books that you're sharing. This is a great one to add in. And this is the Nutcracker in Harlem by T.E. McMorrow, illustrated by James Ransom. Even if you don't spend a lot of time on it, if you have it sitting on your shelf, and pull it out and read once or twice or or have it in your rotation. It's a great to just have, um, even for that, just so that students can see themselves in the books that you're sharing. So um, four books that I shared tonight on these on the Nutcracker theme. Um, this one by Susan Jeffers, the, the original, this is my favorite, the Nutcracker, um, that I use all the time. This Usborne version of the Nutcracker by Anna Milborn. Um, Duke Ellington's Nutcracker Suite by Anna Harwell Salenza and then The Nutcracker in Harlem by T.E. McMorrow. And like I said, all the links for all of those are on the links page if you're interested um, or curious or want just a few more ideas um, to, to take you to put on your wish list or to uh, get from your local library. Those are super fun books. Okay, let's talk about Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is coming up really fast. Um, in the next week and a half, I have two evening performances and I have um, next week I'm going to AOSA National Conference in Salt Lake City, so I have to prepare some sub plans. There are just a lot of things that are happening and I need to have some versatile lessons. So these are some of my favorite lessons. Um, I wanted to start with um, this one that I got from, I believe it was when I taught with Share the Music Curriculum when we had those at my school. I'm not exactly sure which book it comes from. Um, but there's a song that I learned in my very first year of teaching um, and it goes sort of like this. There are many things I am thankful for. I can find them near and far. There are many things I am thankful for. Let me tell you what they are. I'm thankful for, and then you get to choose whatever you think. My family. I'm thankful for my dogs. I'm thankful for hot Cheetos. <laughs> And I'm thankful to be me. And you can do that B section a couple times. 
I think it's Share the Music that that comes from originally. I don't know if it's originally one of their songs or if it's a tr traditional song. I don't know. Um, but it's a, a super fun song. Um, a couple years ago when I was at Target, I found these uh, Build Your Own Turkey um, things in like the dollar spot. You could absolutely make this from construction paper, but I bought the kit because it was years ago. And anyway, so the, the, the main turkey is foam. Um, his wing here says, I am thankful for. And then what you're supposed to do on each of his um, feathers is write one of the things you're thankful for. Well, I left one of them blank so we could sort of brainstorm first um, or, uh, you know, have a, have a blank one. Um, and there, then on the other ones, I wrote in some ideas of what you're thankful for. I'm thankful for my sister. I'm thankful for my school. I'm thankful for my friend. I'm thankful for my dog, my brother. I bought three of these kits. So I got another turkey here. Sorry. I'm thankful for my mom and dad, for my country, for my family, for my music, for my teacher. Um, and so it's, it's just sort of fun to give kids a chance to think about things they're thankful for because that's the point of all of these lessons, right? Is to get kids thinking about how can I be thankful? How can I be grateful? There's another sort of more upbeat version for an older grade called uh, Gratitude Attitude that I've shared about in the past. That's a music K-8 song. Um, I've got a gratitude attitude. I've got a gratitude attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a gratitude attitude. I've got a gratitude attitude, yeah, yeah, yeah. And with the Music K-8 soundtrack, it's really cute. Um, what are you grateful for? And then a kid gets to say, I'm grateful for my family or whatever. It's the same idea of a basic chorus. And then on the B section, on the, the, um, the verse, kids get to add in things that they're thankful for. So on this original version that, that I've done, um, we sing the first part. There are many things I am thankful for. I can find them near and far. And we could sort of come up with little silly actions to go with it. But then, you know, the first time through, I say, I'm thankful for, and then I take a mallet and I go, my family, and I use it like a microphone. I'm thankful for good food. I'm thankful for warm clothing you know I, I have some things prepared but I, I say them into my into my microphone not a real microphone but I say them into the microphone for that part and then I have kids sort of brainstorm so that when we get to the next time through I can hold the microphone down to the kid and the kid can say what they're thankful for into um into the um the fake microphone. And so uh, it gives kids a chance to come up with things that they're grateful for. If you want, you could put them in small groups and say like, ooh, you know, like two or three things they could say. So that if the microphone comes their way, they could really say what they're thankful for. There are a lot of options for that, but it's just a fun, cute little song. And like I said, this is one that I would maybe use K1 or maybe two. And then if you have access to music K8, um, that song Gratitude Attitude is really great. And that would be great for maybe three, four or five, maybe second grade, but um, it's an, a nice version for an older grade instead of just the I'm thankful for version. But you, like I said, if you wanted a visual like this, you could make this pretty easy with construction paper or cardstock if you wanted. Um, I just got a kit from Target because it was there and I was like, oh my gosh, that's going to totally match the song. How perfect. So that's what I bought, but you don't have to have those if you don't want. Um, okay, so one of the ones that I'm doing right now with first grade um, is a song called Shoe Turkey. And the intro into that is this book, Run, Turkey, Run. And I've shared about this before by Diane Mayer. And the, co the cool part about this book is um, it, you know, talks about, oh my gosh, Thanksgiving is coming. But Thanksgiving is coming, but Turkey is having a bad day. Everyone else is preparing for Thanksgiving, getting ready to give thanks. But Turkey needs to find a way to escape. Because here comes the farmer to get him. Run, turkey, run! Clompity clomp, here comes the farmer. And then it goes through a series of scenarios. If the turkey rolls in the mud, will the farmer think that he's a pig? <laughs> I love this picture of a turkey covered in mud. And it goes, no! Run, turkey, run! Muckety muck, here comes the farmer. Look, the duck pond. If turkey swims in the pond, will the farmer think he's a duck? No. Run, turkey, run! Splashity splash. Here comes the farmer. 
And with my kids, we talk about uh, where does the clompity clomp come from? Where does the muckety muck? What about the splashity splash? And we decide it's the, the sound of the farmer coming. And it changes depending on the situation. So later on, there's crunchity crunch and he's running through, you know, leaves. Um, and so this is a, just a really fun version. Guess what? The turkey does not get caught on Thanksgiving Day. Um, the farmer and his family have peas, mashed potatoes, and grilled cheese sandwiches for Thanksgiving, for which the turkey gives thanks. And then, well, he eventually hides in some trees, and the farmer can't find him. Well, then the next day, the family goes hunting for a Christmas tree, and of course, along the way, they find the turkey, <laughs> and he goes, run, turkey, run! And so he he gets he's still running in the end. But as we're going, you know, it's a sort of a fun interactive book. And um, one of the things that I point out to kids on one of the pages illustrations, um, I talk about this turkey. And if you look closely, he's lost a couple feathers along the way. And we talk about you know if you pet a dog or cat, sometimes you'll find their fur on your hand or their hair on your hands or clothes. Um, and sometimes you might find bird feathers. Birds can lose feathers, that's okay. They don't wanna lose all their feathers. But if they lose a couple feathers, it's not a big deal. And so we talk about you know how birds can lose feathers. And then um, um, I talk about this song about how we wanna help save our friend the turkey on Thanksgiving. And so um, we, we tell the turkey, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Because if the farmer walks around and goes, oh, I found tracks in the ground. He's going to know the tracks will lead him to the turkey. Oh, I think I see where a turkey has stopped to take a rest. And then they go, oh, no, he's going to find the turkey. Oh, I found some feathers on the ground that belong to a turkey. Oh, these are turkey feathers. I know that turkey's around here. Just like if I was looking for you, first graders, if I saw your backpacks in the hallway, I'd know that you were nearby. Or if I saw that you left your sweater or your sweatshirt, or your water bottle, or like a thousand other things that they leave all around. If I saw that you left that, I would know you nearby. And the farmer, when he goes to look for the turkey, he looks for something that would be from the turkey. So if he finds feathers, or if he finds, you know, turkey footprints, he's gonna know the turkey was there. So here's what we're gonna tell our turkey. Take your feathers and throw them over there. Another word for over there is yonder. So we'll say, throw them yonder. Way, way yonder. Or if we want to say yonder over there, yeah, we'd say yonder. If we want to say way over there, we'd say um, way yonder. So we're going to say take your feathers and throw them way yonder and then run the opposite direction. Because then the farmer will see your feathers and he'll go that way, but then you'll be safe because you've gone the other direction. So you throw your feathers way yonder. And, and you know what? There's another word that means like go away and it's shoo, shoo. So I've got this little song that goes like this. Shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder. Shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder. And so we're going to say, shoo, shoo, go that way. And then I, I teach the kids the song. Shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder. Shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder. And then I say, but you know what we're going to need? something for the farmer to eat when because he's not going to eat the turkey we're not going to let him eat the turkey so we got to find something for the farmer to eat hmm. oh i know okay uh, i'm going to sing something and you sing yes sir so it goes like this uh, little girl little boy yes sir and, and yeah and you respond yes sir so when i when i do that you gotta sing yes sir are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Are you ready to sing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. So, and then I lead them through, you know, um, where we're going to find something else to eat that is not turkey. So I sing, little girl, little boy. Yes, sir. Did you go downtown? Yes, sir. Did you go to the store? Yes, sir. Did you buy some bread? Yes, sir. Did you buy some cheese? Yes, sir. Did you buy some ham? Yes, sir. Did you buy some pickles? Yes, sir. Did you buy some mayonnaise? Yes, sir. Did you buy some lettuce? Yes, sir. What do you think we're gonna make instead of turkey? And someone's like, sandwiches! I'm like, yes. <laughs> And actually, this, <laughs> and so then we do, when we sing, shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder, shoo, 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 turkey, throw your feathers way yonder, and then I do another set of food. This is actually trickier than I thought it was going to be, because I, I realize first graders don't know a lot of food or a lot about food, so I have to really simplify. 
So <laughs> if I'm going to actually like give them the ingredients, I can't like you know, go through the ingredients for like how to make bread. Did you get some yeast? Like they won't have any idea what we're making. So I have to make it a little bit obvious. So uh, like, here's another example. Um, little girl, little boy. Yes, sir. Did you go downtown? Yes, sir. Did you buy some hamburger meat? Yes, sir. Did you buy some seasoning? Yes, sir. Did you buy some cheese? Yes, sir. Did you buy some lettuce? Yes, sir. Did you buy some salsa? Yes, sir. Did you buy some tortillas? Yes, sir. What do you think we're gonna make? Or what do you think we're gonna make? And then they could go like, tacos. Sometimes we'll get that. Um, I have been able to successfully um, lead them into spaghetti with meatballs, tacos. Um, I tried try to do the ingredients for a cake once and they were not getting it. So I was like, flour, baking soda, eggs, milk. And they're like, mm, like, hot dogs like they had no idea and so then she was like did you get some frosting yes sir and they're just like still don't know i'm like did you get a cake mix yes sir <laughs> okay cool what are we gonna make and they finally knew but it's it's so fun to lead them through that but then their job so how is this musical their job um is to do the shoot 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 turkey throw your feathers away they sing that part and then i lead them through and they sing their response so I give them the cue word and they have to sing yes sir back to me. Or if you're a ma'am, you could say yes ma'am or what or whatever you what title you go by, you know, yes, whatever. And so then they can sing back at you, right? So then that's what they get to do, and it clearly demonstrates A B form, and you could play around with that too if you wanted to. One of the things that I've taken out is I try not to say girls and boys all that much anymore. So um, but the song, that's like the that's like the hook into the song. So like how do you get past that? So what I decided to do this time was my first great friends yes sir did you go downtown yes sir or i could say my friend or my little wild cats yes sir did you go downtown yes sir because i just like taking their girls and boys out of out of stuff to make it less about that but um and to to give you know kids representation so anyway so i take that out and so i've just been saying my first grade friends or little wild cats or sometimes i say them my little turkeys whatever um so it's just a fun easy little way to to add into the song and then if you've done that, if you've done Shoe Turkey, you can do um, Old Black Fly if you wanted to share this book. I recently had done There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly. And um, so this hooks in really well because the fly is the protagonist in this book. Um, I'm pretty sure I've shared about this before, but this song has Shoe Fly, Shoe Fly, Shoe on every other page. And so again, they're connecting in the vocabulary shoe with like get away. Only this time, we're not saying shoe, shoe, shoe to save the turkey. We're saying shoo, 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 get away because we don't like the fly being around. And that's fun for kids because they're using the same terminology but in a different context. Shoo, like get away because we like you and shoo, get away because we don't. And so it's sort of fun to give kids that chance to compare and contrast, which is sort of fun. Okay, so uh, let me do uh, one more that's uh, one of my favorite lessons and then I'll get into a slightly older grade. So. Um, Years ago, again, when I was a first year teacher, um, I did the song, Five Fat Turkeys Are We. Five fat turkeys are we. We slept all night in a tree. When the cook came around, we couldn't be found. And that's why we're here, you see. Loved it. Great song. Super fun song. I would like, I went to that lesson like, yes, this is going to be a win. Awesome. And then the song took 20 seconds. And I was like, what do I do with the next five to 10 minutes? Like this was going to be one of my blocks. Like what do I do? Because it's a short song. And so again, I had been to Target and I got these little foam turkeys. And so I had five kids come up and hold the turkeys and they were the trees and they held the, the turkey in their branches. So there are kids standing up here with these little brown foam turkey cutouts in their hands. And we sang the song, five fat turkeys are we, we slept all night in a tree. When the cook came around, we couldn't be found, and that's why we're here, you see. And we can have a conversation about, you know, do turkeys sleep in trees? Not turkeys from a farm, wild turkeys do, but not turkeys like on a commercial farm or whatever. We don't, I don't get into that because I don't want to be like, let's talk about the food industry. No, but like I, I talk about, you know, turkeys that we have on farms grow so big and fat, they can't fly up into trees. So the cook wouldn't look for them there. So it's a smart hiding place. 
because you'd look for a sparrow in a tree or maybe an owl, but you wouldn't look for a turkey because they're not that kind of a bird on a farm anyway. So anyway, so we have that fun conversation. So there are the, ki the five kids holding the turkeys up in their hands, right? And so then I say, oh, we're going to add a new part, part B. It's a poem. And this part goes, hide, hide, try to hide. Do not let him catch us. Hide, hide, try to hide. Do not let him catch us. And I say, who's singing this part? And they realize it, or who's saying this part? And they realize that the turkeys are saying this part. You're right. The turkeys, they don't want, who do they not want to catch them? Like the cook. You're right. When the cook came around, we couldn't be found. And so they're saying, hide, hide, try to hide. Right, so they're up in the tree. And then a strong wind came up. And I go, oh, that wasn't strong enough. Can I have all of you help me? So all the kids were sitting on the ground. Like the five kids were holding turkeys. They're like, something ominous is happening. And I'm like, I need a strong wind from our audience. And they all do that. And I tap on one kid and I take their little turkey and I go. And then I have my slide whistle and I go. As the turkey falls to the ground. And then I jump out from behind the kid who I've made to drop the turkey. And I go, aha! A turkey for my turkey dinner! And then that kid's like, <laughs> and I say, ah, I've gotten a turkey! How many turkeys are left? And they go, four. There are four in the tree. Oh, good. So then we have to change our song. Four fat turkeys are we. We slept all night in a tree. So we do that bit. And the hide, hide, try to hide. Do not let him catch us. Hide, hide, try to hide. Do not let him catch us. And then the, the wind blows. <laughs> and another one falls out of the tree. And so then there are only three turkeys in the tree. And we, we get down to zero turkeys. And then I turn to the whole class and I count. 27 fat turkeys I see. And all the kids who are sitting go like, no. <laughs> anyway, it's a super fun, uh, different, slightly variation version of the song. But the B section is just a silly poem that I made up. The slide whistle is hilarious to add in. And then the the, the countdown of the turkeys is fun too because first grade is, is working to count down. And so this is giving them a chance to sort of practice this and it's just fun. So there's a link to that whole lesson plan on my blog if you're interested on the links page. Page. I did a whole blog post about it so you can find more on the on the blog page. But that's just an easy five fat turkey, simple song. Just extend it a little bit so we can get more out of that content and also because it's not a very long song. So why not just add a little bit more? Okay, I'm going to jump ahead to some sort of middle, intermediate, or older grades, second, third, and fourth. Um, so one of my favorite things to do, um, I shared uh, last week about the everything stew, the cards that I use. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But um, I have an... This was like a, I needed to assess them and we needed like we were running out of time. And so I, I pulled out this interactive PDF game that I made um, and it's going to be a little bit well, it's going to be backwards. I'm so sorry, Facebook and Instagram. I'll try and zoom in here. Um, so I have a Basset Hound, so it was fun to create something that had um, a Basset Hound character in it. Uh, but it says fill the table and I know it's backwards, so I'll read it for you. Help Grandma fill the table with great food. Choose the right rhythm to successfully get the food to the table. Choose the wrong rhythm and your food might fall off the table and get caught by the dog. And I have, thanks to my friend Karen, I have an amazing little bass and hound puppet that I, of course, bring out. Um, and he talks about how he would like for you to just drop the food. Please don't actually get it to Grandma's table because he would like for you to drop it so he could eat it. Anyway. The kids get have a word like apple cider, and then they have three little pies with choices. There's tee tee ta, there's ta rest, and there's tee 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 tee. And they have to choose the word that they think matches the, the rhythm, apple cider. And so what my kids do at my school, and this is something from their homerooms, is they clap out the sounds, apple cider. Probably there are a lot of other people or at other schools where that's a procedure for your classroom teachers too. But they clap through the sound and I say, let's see which one matches. And so they get to go through and it, let's say they choose the right one. Oh, hooray, you chose the right rhythm and got the food to the table. Thanks for helping grandma, next challenge. And they get another food, peas. So then they can look and decide which one is which. Hmm, ta di ta, ta ta di. Ta rest. Sorry, I use ta's and ta dees for takadimi, not ta titi. Let me translate for you. Titi ta, ta titi. 
Taurus. So they get to choose which one goes with which. Let's say we choose the wrong one. Oh no, you chose the wrong rhythm. The food fell off the table and the dog got it. Try again. Luckily, grandma made lots of leftovers, so there's more peas to go around. Okay, so then they get to choose the right one. Ta, great, oh wow. And you know what, grandma looks a little different because I tried to make sure that we had um, different representations of different looking grandmas on here so that no matter what your kids look like in your classroom, they'll see someone who looks sort of, sort of like them in the grandmas. Okay, so and then there's some fun words, caramel apple, and all these fun Thanksgiving words. Ta, rest, sorry, cheese. Um, and so kids get to go through. And what I usually tend to do is that I have, um, I mean, I use it for an assessment. So I sit there and I call up kids one by one, but I usually have them in small groups. So um, if they need to go back and ask their teammates, like, what do you think? Which one, especially like carrot is not hard, but let me see if I can find, you know, coffee's not hard. Baked potato is not too hard. Cranberries, okay, well, that's easier, apple pie. Well, man, I made all these ones really easy. Apple, hold on. Hot. Okay, this one's a great example. Hot chocolate. That's three syllables. And is it hot chocolate? Ta, ta, di? Or is it hot, hot chocolate? Ta, di, ta. And kids have to sort of clap through and decide which they like better. So I usually say like, ta, di, ta, hot chocolate. Ta, ta, di, hot chocolate. Which do you like better? Or for hot chocolate, you can say, do the first word first hot, do the next word next, chocolate. That works for this word, but not for every vocabulary. So this is a tricky one because these two pies hold similar rhythms, so they have to choose. So when they're in small groups, it makes it easier. They can go through and check and see what their small group thinks is best. But if they choose right, hooray, grandma's so happy. If they choose wrong, the dog gets it. And then the dog is happy, so like I guess win-win. But um, if, they, if the dog does get it, they get to try again. So it's not the end of the world, which is sort of great. Okay, so that's just an, an interactive PDF. If you have a smart board, um, if you have a Promethean board, if you have, uh, even if you just have a digital projector and you wanted to put it on, like on your computer, projecting onto it and have students come up to your computer and use your mouse to click, that would work too. But it's just fun, it's a, an interactive PDF, so the PDF is hyperlinked and it'll work on your computer. But it's just a fun way. Um, and like I said, I, it gives me a chance for assessment because then as kids go up, I can decide whether they got it or not. Um, and if they need a little help, that's fine with me, but um, it's just there to check. And then also for me to say like, oh, that kid is not, doesn't understand how the rhythm sort of works or um, they're having a tricky time with such and such. So that's a fun version of something that the kids can do. Um, I shared a little bit last week about these rhythm sort cards that I have, and these are all, this is very similar to what we had up there, only that was an interactive PDF, and this is actually a chance for kids to rearrange and create um, with the cards here. And so this is the Thanksgiving version. Um, I have another set of cards with all just like regular food words from the year, but this has things like pumpkin latte and pumpkin pie and uh, caramel apple, things like that. Um, that, that kids would see more often or maybe around Thanksgiving or on the Thanksgiving table. So what my kids have done in the last couple of days, my second graders, um, we've spread these out. We've found the association between the word and the rhythm. Um, we've read the words in a word chain, so like eight in a row. Then we read the rhythms in a word chain, like eight in a row. And then I'll say, you know, like really there are only five different versions. There's ta di ta di. Okay. There's ta ta di. Let's see. There's ta rest. There's ta di ta. And there's ta ta. And I showed those to kids. And actually, up on the wall, I have those five different building bricks of the five different uh, combinations. And I say, your job now is to sort all the words by their rhythms. So put all the ta, ta words together, put all the ta, ta di words together, put all the ta di, ta words together, and they love that. And then a few minutes later, you know, as they're going, I find the kids who are struggling, and I go and help them. The kids are already done, then I say, if you're already done, find a different way to sort them. Maybe you'll sort them by color. You'll do all the reds together, all the yellows together, all the greens together. Maybe you'll sort them into just drinks and just desserts and just vegetables. Maybe you'll just, I don't care. You find another way to sort them. So while those high flyers are off doing that, I go to the kids who need help sorting the rhythms and we talk through and we work through that.
One of the things that I've done with my older kiddos then is we take these cards and they're like, whatever, those are easy. I'm like, great. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Put two in a, or put two in a row to start. Okay, read the rhythm. So it's ta, ta, ta di. Oh, great. Okay, let's see. Try it now. Ta, ta di, ta. Ooh, wonderful. Okay, let's see. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> ta di, ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta di, ta. You could have kids do four in a row, eight in a row, quiz each other. You could then have them do, okay, great, now do this with body percussion. So pat, pat. Pat, 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 or clap, clap, pat, 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 and then you flip it. And you maybe you do four in a row, you do eight in a row. My recent favorite thing to do is to give the kids the cards to work in groups of two or three, usually two because I have the instruments for it, and then I give them, um, you know, we take a barred percussion instrument. And you might remember I've been talking about my fifth grade, they've been having a really rough year, um, and so one of the incentives is we're pulling out instruments, we're using them in more rudimentary ways, but we're doing them in ways that, you know, will keep them successful. So one of the activities we've done is we set in a pentatonic scale, so um, we have um, C, D, E, G, and A, we take off the Fa and the T, and it makes it pentatonic so that the kids don't hit any of those note the seconds, the weird intervals that'll make them sound wrong. So what we do is then I say, great, put four in a row, four cards in a row, and then play that using C, D, or E. So maybe I put out, let's see, apple, apple, broccoli, gross, sounds gross, apple, broccoli, caramel, apple, coffee. Okay, so now I get to take my pitch percussion instrument and play that. Apple, broccoli, caramel, apple, coffee. Ooh, I love that. I'm gonna find a different way to do it though. Let's see. Apple, oh, sorry, apple, broccoli, caramel, apple, coffee. Ooh, wow. And then we'll switch jobs and say, okay, then the other kid sets out four in a row and the new kid plays it. Okay, great. So maybe they, I don't know, maybe let's do another word. So macaroni. Pepper, gross. <laughs> Garlic cookie. Oh, these are the most delicious foods ever. Okay, so we'll do the same. And then once once they get good, we do the set of three. So C, D, and E. And then we'll add the next two, G and A. So maybe we'll do it. macaroni, pepper, garlic, cookie. Macaroni, pepper, garlic, cookie. I'll try that a different way. Macaroni, pepper, garlic, cookie. Ugh, gross. But you know what? That's sort of boring because that's a lot of toss. Let me see if I can add in something that just makes a little bit more interesting. Macaroni, pepper, apple cider cookie. Okay, macaroni, pepper, apple cider cookie. And so they're taking these basic building bricks, they're then using them on the bars, and then eventually you might get to a point where I say, see if you can do it without the cards. So this is sort of leading them to improvise using the ta's and titi's, thinking about the form. Think about maybe they put it in like ta di ta di ta 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 di ta di ta. Like they, they do like an A B A C form or something with the cards. It's sort of just leading them into coming up with their own things. And eventually I'd love for them to do it on their own, but it keeps them from doing just like you know, if you sort of scaffold them into it, um, and it's it's really fun. But it, you, it's also fun because you give the kids the foods, and they think more about the foods, and they do the rhythms, and so they're they're learning and they're being successful without like feeling the fatigue of like oh I'm being forced to learn something. Like they get really excited about it. So um, again, this is just a set of cards that I made years ago, thinking oh I'll use it for this, and now I'm using it for two, three, four more different things that are different than maybe what I planned to originally. And I've shared about this before, so maybe you've already gotten one of these before and you're like, oh, hey, cool, another way to do it. And there are other themes for this, not just Thanksgiving, but like ocean or barnyard or, uh, thanks, sorry, St. Patrick's or what, I mean, there's spring all themed throughout um, uh, holidays or non-holidays. So there are some cool things you can do with that. Another one that I'm, and that's something that I could maybe, maybe put into a sub tub, but another thing I'm thinking about is that um, 
that Thanksgiving is coming up, but right before Thanksgiving break, I'm going to a convention. I'm going to Salt Lake City for the National ACDA, or National ACDA. I've been part of ACDA for a long time. National AOSA, um, the American North Shoulder Association Conference in Salt Lake City. If I see you there, please come up and say hi. It's always good to see friends. Um, but uh, that's next week, so I have to start thinking about subplants. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do is to do more focus on treble clef. So, um, Again, I was inspired by Target <laughs> last year. Um, I went to the dollar spot, um, and uh, I'm just, before I forget, uh, Karen Robinson says, the more disgusting the foods are, the, the better the kids like it. True. So if you have, like, garlic cookie, they're like, gross, yum. Okay. Uh, have you thought about making a Thanksgiving dinner rhythm set with Latin foods? Hmm, no, I have not, but I'd be happy to consider that. I need to find some great clip art for that. Um, page. So I'll look for that and see if I can't make that. Kids like it for assessment. Oh, Karen's talking about the interactive PDF game. Someone said, do you have a bundle of all the different rhythm cards on TPT? Not a bundle with all of them, but I guess I could do that. I have all of them separate, but I um, could definitely look into a bundle. I'll check that out. Okay. So inspired by a target dollar spot. So last year at Halloween, I bought these little erasers thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do so many great things with them. Well, I did not. And then I was like, oh, I bought all those. What am I going to use them for? Um, and so then I, you know, I also had bought a lot of these little um, like vase filler marble things. Um, and I use them for awesome socks, rocks, like a, a giveaway for kids. But I just had so many, like I bought them in bulk. So um, I decided to use them for treble clef uh, stuff. So I made this set called Treble Clef Adventure. And I thought if I put adventure in the title, kids will like love love it right so anyway so there are like five different stations um and i'm using them for centers and i'm going to use them sort of throughout the year but this is a thanksgiving version of them so um one of the stations is you take uh let's see if i can find an example so i've sort of mixed together some christmas and some thanksgiving examples you take one of the cards here and it says a c e right and then you put it onto the staff here. So basically, and you could print this in black and white, you don't have to print in color, but um, you, you take what's here and then you transfer it to the mini staff. So that'd be like a writing activity. Um, you could print off this worksheet in black and white on paper. You could print it onto cardstock and laminate it and then you use dry erase marker on it, maybe, but it'd probably be easier if you use paper. So that was sort of a start of something we could do, right? Um, then I decided uh, okay, well, I've already made one of those things. Let's take it and do it a different way. So I sort of flipped the task. So now, um, and this is this is a, like a, an explanation page that goes along with each of these little games. Um, so it says A, C, E, and it shows what it would look like on the staff, and it gives you know two options for E or whatever. So then the kids get a blank. Where's my blank? Um, maybe the kids get a blank. Hello, blank. Oh, no, no, I'll find my blank. So the kids get a blank staff, and what they have to do is they take what's on their worksheet. Oh, I switched. Take what's on their worksheet, A, C, E, and then they gotta take their little marbles or their little erasers or whatever you want, and they put them in the space. It's like the perfect size for that, and so they get to put them on in the spaces. And what's nice is that then they can sort of take this picture that's on the worksheet and match it up to what's on the staff and move the marble around really easily and then it just sort of you know fills right in and they can just look back and check instead of just having just the letters where it's like good luck they the the letters are in there the picture is there and they're just recreating and one of the things that i've added in there for kids if they need it and this comes in again later is um, a, a version where it has all the letters and on the staff and visuals so they can use it as sort of a, a check their work sort of a situation. Okay, so I've got that. So then what's the, the next step after that? Um, so then here's another version where they, they take um, a dry erase marker to a similar looking thing. And here's their, their uh, guide page. So if they need it, they have the help there. But um, they just, on top of the pumpkin, because again, fall theme, they write in the letter. So they'd write in B, E, E. Oh, it's B. Huh, wonderful. Okay, and then they write in, let's see, 
B-A-G, bag. Oh, cool. So then this is another version where this is basically the same type. Oh, treble clef. Remind, remember treble clef? It's a treble clef thing, but it's a different way to get at it. So now they're writing on top of the pumpkin what it should look like. And again, with the explanation page, um, it gives them sort of a visual. So if you do pop this in a center, it shows them like, take this right in here. <laughs> it gives them a visual and a written explanation um, for what they're supposed to do. Okay, cool. Well, and here's another version of it. Oh my gosh. So on this one, dots on notes. So you take what's here on this side, what's on the card, and you, you recreate it. This is very similar to the, the worksheet version, only now it's just like move it from here, put it on a blank. So they're just moving over, they're taking the marbles, they're filling it in, so that it matches what's on the cards. They've got their like challenge card and then they've got the page. It's again, just a slight variation, but enough of a variation that keeps kids interested. And then there's this one, cover to complete. And this is another simple version where they just, it's, it's very similar to the, the very first one I showed you, but it just has the things here. They have to cover it up on the staff. But mostly, it's just such a great kinesthetic thing to have the kids moving around and manipulating just the marbles or the erasers on the staff so that kids are getting a chance to sort of feel out and look. And then there's the version where they write in, so that's another different, a different kinesthetic experience where they're writing instead of just moving the manipulative. Um, and then they're moving it into a worksheet. Oh, that's slightly different writing. You know, so it's just different ways to get at it because all learners are slightly different learners. So getting them to get at the concept in a lot of different ways is really valuable. So this, I sort of showed you examples from the Christmas set and the Thanksgiving set because those are the ones that I'm printing out getting laminated ready to go right now. Um, but there are versions for like, St. Patrick's Day and, and Valentine's Day and all sorts of stuff. But there, those are the two that I showed you tonight. And then uh, one more lesson, but that was that's going to go in my sub tub. Another one that I'm planning on putting in my sub lessons um, is Over the River and Through the Woods. And so I have a couple examples and I have a couple books. I did a favorite folk song set for this. So the sub, I'm going to give them all of the options. Do you want to run through the PowerPoint? Do you want to read the book? Do you, you know, I'm giving them lots of options. So one of them is sort of the more traditional book, Over the River and Through the Woods. This is with sort of traditional pictures, the traditional story. This, I shared about that before. This is a book by um, Emma Randall. Another slightly different version um, is Over the Ribbon Through the Woods by Linda Ashman. I've shared about this too. This is my book of the week two, year, two weeks ago um, on Facebook on Wednesdays. I'm just sharing a book of the week. So that's uh, one of the books that came in. And this one's slightly different because there are like four different families that I have to get to grandma and grandpa's by Thanksgiving. And so it changes the words. Pack up the pooches and load the van. We need to leave by eight. There's so much to bring. Do we have everything? Come on, we can't be late. Into the tunnel, across the bridge, beyond the overpass. Dad mumbles, uh-oh, the fuel gauge is low. Looks like we need some gas. Mile after mile on two lane roads, no stations along the way. No gas, not a drop. We sputter, then stop. We start to walk away then. Nay. And then I found a cool um, YouTube version of it. And it's like, nay, nay, a horse and a sleigh. Nay, nay, a horse and a sleigh. Or something. Anyway, it's a, I'll, put, I'll post a link to that video. Anyway, this is a slightly different version of Over the River and Through the Woods. And then there's another version of Over the River and Through the Woods. And this one is by Derek Anderson. And this one is really funny because the words are traditional, but the pictures, if you, if you didn't know what the words said, you'd be like, this is a tragic story. Um, over the river and through the woods, of the turkey family is going, you know, just having a good old day. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. Oh, what a delightful, charming little book. Through the white and drifted snow. Oh, what a happy turkey family on their way to see grandma and grandpa. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so what's happening here? Uh, over the river and through the woods. The words are just like so gentle and exciting. And then the illustration is a very, very angry bloodhound dog and a hunter wearing like an orange, bright orange hunting cap pointing to like turkey plus turkey dinner equals treats for fluffy. Like this is tragic. Like I don't know if I want to show this to students. Anyway, um, but it's it's funny because in the end, like the dog does chase the turkeys and then he gets the the horse who knows the way who takes the sleigh sort of like 
runs into the dog with a sled and and there's like a tragic mix up and then um, they all make friends and the mom gets real angry and yells at the dog and whatever. Anyway, they all become friends at the Thanksgiving table. If you didn't know that, it'd be a slightly tragic book. But I ha I'm going to put two different books. I'm going to put the favorite folk song set. I'm going to leave it for the sub. And I'm going to say, we're doing versions of compare and contrast. So you can compare and contrast the two different books. Have a quick little discussion about how are they different? Why were they different? What were different parts of them? And um, the kids know the song Over the River and Through the Woods because we did it in the previous year. And so what I'm going to have them do is with remaining time is going to write their own version um, and come up with their own Over the River and Through the Woods. And giving them these examples will give them a chance to see like where would they go? What would they do? What's their story? Where are they going? Who's going with them? And especially if you show them this book, um, the one Over the River and Through the Woods by Linda Ashman, it has those four different families who are traveling in different ways, different modes of transportation, like hot air balloon and train and plane, all that sort of stuff. So it would give kids sort of that idea of what to do as far as like a, a variation on the theme. Um, this book, The 12 Days of Thanksgiving, is another way you could get at that. If, you, if the kids know The 12 Days of Christmas, or even if you have the book of the 12 days of Christmas, you can have them read this one instead and then talk about, you know, what are they thankful for on each day? And it's another chance for them to come up with and brainstorm the things that they're thankful for. You have to leave some sort of more detailed notes for the sub for this because not all subs can walk in and be like, well, sure, we can do compare and contrast. But the really fun thing is that some subs are like, I don't want to sing. Oh my gosh, this is like an ELA lesson. I can totally whip this out. You know, so for some subs, like they're like, this is my jam. This feels like a classroom lesson to them and they're on it. And other subs are like, Ugh, I don't know. And so to, if you leave some sort of detailed ideas about how you can get to your end goal and you leave sort of a worksheet that you might create with like a flow chart of like, you know, the different days where kids can write in the thing. Or um, if you give them, you know, over the river and through the woods to blank, we go. <laughs> The blank knows the way to blank, you know, like it, it's sort of like Mad Libsy, but they can fill that in if, if you think that they're going to need that support. But some subs are like on it, you know, and there are two subs in my building who I know, like I could give this to Karen and I could give this to Eva and they would be just fine. You know, like I just know that, or I can give this to Tanisha and she will run with it and be amazing, but it depends on your subs. So, you know, how you want to get at that is, is a different way to get at that. But even if you want, like I said, my favorite folk song set, I might have them project that and then read through the story and they could talk about elements that are different. And even if you're doing that, you know, doing like a compare and contrast word bank on the wall to talk about how things are different, that's valuable too. So there are just some really cool things. But the nice thing is then the lesson that the sub is giving is all based around the song. It's talking about variations. It's talking about um, you know, traditional words and lyrics and how can you update them and make them, make them your own. And it's just a sort of a fun lesson for students. Anyway, I, um, that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ideas for Thanksgiving at least. And then some nutcracker books to start out that you can help, uh, sort of get ready for, um, for the December season. So I hope that gives you some ideas. Um, you know, and if you want to include something like this in your lessons, it might be helpful for people who are listening on a podcast. I have just put on an amazing turkey, uh, hat cap. So if you want to add this into your lesson, I'm sure that would just make everything so amazing. Or if you're that kind of teacher, you might want, um, this one, this kind of hat. And again, podcast listeners. Now I put on a hat that looks like a cooked turkey. But anyway, these would add, I'm sure, <laughs> so amazingly to any lesson. So you might want to think about, you know, getting these as well. Okay, so that gives you some ideas for Thanksgiving. I hope that uh, helps. Like I said, all the links for all the things I've talked about are on the links page. So in case you're interested and you need some of those, um, click either my link at profile or the link at the bottom of the video. There are some link ideas for you there. I hope I'll see you at Salt Lake City for the AOSA National Conference. Um, if you're there, say hi. Um, so I'm hoping to see a lot of folks there. But uh, thanks so much for spending your Monday night with me. I'll see you next Monday. Have a great week, everyone.